Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today, our guest is Hera Ali. Hera is a career coach and a trainer, the CEO of Advancing Your Potential, Managing Director of International Women Empowerment Events, and a co-founder of Career Excel and the Gray Area. Her articles have been published across a variety of leading outlets, including The Huffington Post, Thrive Global, Women at Forbes, Entrepreneur, Women Entrepreneur, and I could just keep going. Um, she's a recipient of a Top 100 Women Award and has recently published her book, Her Way to the Top, A Guide to Smashing the Glass Ceiling. She's passionate about empowering women and ethnic minorities and is a strong advocate of diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Kira, we are so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you so much, Tyler. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, let me hand you the virtual microphone. I'm excited to hear your story and, and go ahead. The stage is yours. Okay, perfect. So my background story is that I am originally from Pakistan um, and that's where I started my career. I started working as junior manager HR. That was my very first job um, and I was doing very well. My career was on a very great career trajectory as you could call it. And you know, I was getting promotions, increments, and it was wonderful. Uh, but then my husband decided to move to Dubai uh, for better respects, for better job respects. So I moved with him. Um, and that's when I started uh, my own business. Um, and I was expecting my first kid. So I said, okay, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm going to start my own business now. So I, I started my business. I built my brand uh, over there from scratch. And um, then I, I was training a lot of people, especially women. And I was doing a lot of women leadership programs that were being very well received. Um, and life was really good because, as you know, the way is tax free. Uh, so it was wonderful. I had reoccurring clients. Um, yeah, and then after that, my husband decided to move to London. And he's an actuary, by the way, so he keeps getting his job transfers. So, so he decided to move to London. And of course, I packed my bag and went along with him. And then in London, I moved nearly four years back. Um, and here, once again, I had to start my business all over again. I had to build my leadership brand from scratch, and nobody knew me. So it was quite a bit of a challenge because. Um, you know, when you already know people around you and the culture is familiar, when you, you know, everything is, you're familiar with everything, it's, it's relatively easier, but when you don't know anybody, then it just becomes a bit of a challenge. So um, I started writing, I started podcasting because I thought that, well, you know, nobody knows me here, so that's the best way to get my name out of the market. I should start writing. So I started writing about topics that I'm very passionate about, and that's um, you know, diversity, inclusion, and, you know, the blogs and, the, and the, the articles I wrote, very well received. Some of them were shared by Rihanna Huffington. Um, and I sort of, I think, you know, I, there was one of the blogs on imposter syndrome was, was shared hundreds of times and thousands of times on Twitter one day. And I was like, you know, I got overnight fame. And then I was interviewed by a lot of people. I decided to write a book. I, I surveyed 300 women across the globe. Uh, I wrote a book, and the book um, had amazing reviews. Um, and we, and a lot of people tell me this. They're like, how, do, how did you reach out to all these global influencers? And I was like, the only thing you need to do is reach out to them, right? What is the worst that can happen? They'll probably say no. Um, so I reached out to like everybody I really admired, and for people in my circle, whose books I'd been reading when I was a child, actually. So, you know, these people were like influencers and, and um, had a huge impact in my life. I, I used to love their books. I still love their books. And I still, um, you know, every, in every article that I write, I'm, I'm usually quoting them or, you know, writing things about them. So I reached out to them and they said, uh, yes, I mean, one or two were quite busy. I remember... I reached out, um, I'm a, a mentor at the Sherry Blair Foundation. So I reached out to Sherry Blair, she was busy the first time. But I said, well, you know what? I'm going to anyway send her my book. And I said, I'm going to send my book to her. I sent my book to her after, um, I think a week or so, she replied back to me and she sent me a review. And then Malala Yousafzai's dad um, sent me a review. And I was very persistent uh, with my reviews. So I think that was one of the good things that um, that I think that really helped me in, in building my brands. And then last year, I sort of launched three businesses. I launched the gray area, which captures the experience of ethnic minorities mm -hmm. at workplace. And I launched Curry Excel, which is an online women leadership program, which has some great reviews. Um, and I launched international women empowerment mm -hmm. events, the objective of which is to empower 
Asian women and to connect the eight Eastern women with the Western women. So this is my story. And I think um, if I know students are watching this, uh, so my, I would say that, you know, the lessons which I would pass on to you after having um, started my business all over again in, in, in three or four different places and now possibly even the four time post COVID because we all have to sort of reinvent our business and you know, pivot our brands, pivot our business. Um, I would say the key is resilience. The key is never to give up. The key is to be persistent. Um, and sure, there will be failures, of course. There will be lots of failures, to be honest. And I always say this to everybody that failures are actually good for your health. They're like vitamins. Without failures, you will not get stronger. So, um, yeah, I guess that is something which I would definitely, definitely uh, pass on to you. And, of course, reciprocity is really important. So if, if you really want to get well, uh, get ahead in life, then I think networking is the key. And I have developed some lasting relationships in, in every country that I have worked in, every country that I did business in. So I would say that persistence, uh, you know, uh, being resilient towards failures and not being afraid to hear no, because I think that's what discourages most entrepreneurs. You know, what if I hear no? What if they say no? What if they, if, um, you know, if I don't succeed? Uh, and you know what? Chances are that you may not, but chances are that you may succeed, right? So that, and of course, networking is really important, but do not go around networking without offering anything in return. That is really, really important. Always offer they, you know, always offer something in return. In fact, when you are, you know, reaching out to, to influencers or people who you, uh, you know, you want to ask a favor or review a testimonial, then I would always say that begin by creating and establishing a, relation, establishing a relationship. Do not always ask immediately. Build that relationship and then uh, go ahead and ask. So this is, this is, I think that would be my, um, my secret to success. Yeah, across different cultural, um, you know, across different countries, across different cultures, I established businesses which, which were, which are, I would like to believe, thriving at this point in time. Um, and um, yeah, that's about it. That's awesome. Well, I, I'm really excited to to dig into your story a little bit more, just because we live in a world where kids are, are more and more becoming entrepreneurs even before they finish school. They're starting businesses while they're in school and while they're learning and, and looking at lots of different things. Now, you mentioned that you've had a lot of successful businesses, but we know that there were some failures along the way as well. Can you talk about some of the things that didn't work out? Maybe something that you tried that flopped and, and uh, just talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So when I started my business in Dubai, uh, of course, there was a lot of trial and error because I didn't know what would work. I didn't know what. And to be honest, it actually took a long time to figure out what my passion was, because some people think and I think, uh, you know, people say, oh, well, you should have your career sorted out as soon as you grow up. You should be knowing what you will be in. And that all that all is good. Right. But gone are the days where you know you are living in fixed boxes you are you are living in a world where you could be doing something for 10 or 15 years and then you feel bored and you want to try something else and you can go ahead and try something else and now it's not like oh you you, you know if you're an engineer then you have to be an engineer for the rest of your life or if you're a cook then that's what you're going to be so i think the key is to sort of take time to identify your passion and i think that's uh, that took me a lot of time to figure out so even when i came to london there were lots of different things which i was trying and it didn't work out even Curie excel um you know the women leadership program that i made or the international women empowerment events there were so many times when it didn't work out the first time i had different collaborations we sort of Learned a lot. I was not at all tech savvy. So I mean, that was like the most frustrating bit for me, learning how to operate my own websites, learning how to create membership sites. And I think that was like, that was a lot of hassle and hard work and blood and sweat and tears. Mm -hmm. So this, I think that that's the whole thing that, you know, even when you were writing the book, there were lots of times when I personally went through a really hard time in 2018. I literally, uh, there were times when I didn't want to wake up in the morning or do anything at all. Everything was paused. My book launch was canceled. My program was canceled. Um, and I just didn't want to continue, but then I did. And 
I have always noticed that whatever challenges life threw at me, later on when I look back in hindsight and see that there were always a hidden blessing in that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really important. Cool. Well, so I, I, I like what you're, you're saying right now uh, with your book. And I actually just had a conversation with someone who wants to be a public speaker. And they said, well, but I can't because I'm not a celebrity. I haven't won the Olympics or I haven't done anything fancy. And, and so I pointed out to her that most speakers haven't done that. Most speakers are content experts. They're really good at sales or they're really good at leadership and, and they develop expertise. Um, now, writing a book is a way of establishing expertise. Um, is that why you wrote this particular book? Was it a platform book at, or how did you get the idea? Talk a little bit about the process of writing. Yes, so basically, way, because I worked in different countries, so I was training and coaching women from different countries, and I was seeing a very specific pattern uh, in the challenges that women across the globe were facing. So mm -hmm. when I moved to London, and I was like, oh my God, you know, I've moved to this amazingly uh, developed city, and there will be women breaking glass ceilings, and everything will be perfect. But I realized that a lot of women, you know, many women over here were also facing the same barriers as women in, in the Middle East and Asia. And that's when I realized that a lot of the barriers that women across the globe are facing are, you know, a combination of internal and external challenges. So that's the reason why I wanted to test my theory and um, do a survey on 300 women across the globe. And then I uh, presented the survey in the form of findings and then I presented the, all the research in the book. So that's where the idea came from. And of course, I think needless to say that it was after I wrote the book that I really, you know, my leadership brand sort of, I think, exploded uh, because people really started recognizing me as a thought leader expert. So I think writing a book or writing articles, I think it's, or writing anything is so important because it just sort of gives you credibility, it establishes you as a thought leader. And I would highly encourage that. You don't have to be a celebrity. I wasn't a celebrity. I was, you know, from this small city in, in Pakistan and over these years. And now I'm featured in like more than 100 media outlets. And that's just because I, I did a lot of writing, to be honest. Right. Well, and a lot of hustle. I think that's one thing that kids don't recognize when they see someone successful on YouTube or in the media. They just think, well, they, they just got a lucky break. But that's not true. Even writing articles, you have to send it to people. You have to take feedback. For everyone that's accepted, there's dozens that aren't. And so that's, it's a Last hustle, people. right? Absolutely. So many people reject your articles and people keep saying, well, you get published, aren't you lucky? And I was like, well, I don't really publicize on Facebook, but of the places that have rejected me, haven't published me. And it requires a lot of hard work to sort of preach. And trust me, one thing I really want to clarify here is that, you know, they are, of course, you know, luck may count. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. But opportunity favors those who are prepared so unless and until you are not prepared unless and until you're not willing to put in the hard work your luck is going to be futile it's going to be useless it wouldn't help you at all so always remember this and you cannot i tell women this a lot of women who are starting you know young students boys and girls who are starting the business you and they say well you know what it's just been my first month and i haven't earned anything i was like, I was like well you know what? It took me years to start earning properly. And I know the came to get lessons. But it takes a long time to start getting the dollars in, to be honest, because before that, it's just for going to work and you're building your brand. Yeah. And I think that's true with almost any information based brand. If you're blogging, it's going to take a, uh, hundreds of blogs before you start making money. If you're YouTubing and creating videos, it's going to take hundreds of videos. And you look at these big brands out there. It took a lot of time. Now, one thing that can speed up that time you mentioned earlier, and that's through networking. Now, one of the things that I love that you said is don't just take when you're networking. You want to give, 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 and then maybe ask later down the road. Um, what has that looked like for you as you've been building your brands? How have you connected with other people? What are some of the things that you've done and how have you served those people? Perfect. So I think what a lot of people tell me this, you know, my friend was like, oh, you were like the networking queen, you know, when you had the book launch, you had the, you know, industry leaders attend your book launch and, you know, so many people in the industry. And I think the key to that is that whenever you are establishing a relationship with anybody, you need to build it on sincerity and genuineness and you need to be able to offer something to those people. And then, you know, I, I always give, give, give. 
and the fourth time I would ask. So it's right. it's important that whenever you even like I said with you know right so people wouldn't expect that she would be sending reviews out or she would be responding so promptly and the first time she didn't have time and I said well okay fine even if you don't have time I still send her my book and I said you know what I know you didn't have time but I was still like because a lot of people say okay so she reviews okay connection cut sorry bye bye it doesn't work that way so you have to st still keep on cultivating that relationship and it's after my book was published that you know they are the use of Zayn Malala's dad and um, Trey Blair. These these people gave me review, reviews after my book was published, and I sent out to them, and they said, "Well, it's it's a great book, and you would like to write a review." So the first time they refused, but the second time they probably saw that you know she didn't cut off and she was persistent, and she still wanted to send the book review, even though we refused uh, to you know uh, send a testimonial. So I think these things really matter. You know, to be able to give back, to be able to build that relationship. And even if you're on LinkedIn, whatever social media platform that you're using, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, the influencers you follow, I would say build a relationship with them, follow them, appreciate them, acknowledge them. And then after that, when they see your name coming up again and again, they would know that, you know, this person it really is out there and she, she genuinely follows me or he genuinely follows me and is my fan or whatever. So let's give him or her a chance. So you need to build that over time. Yeah, and I, I think kids make this harder than it needs to be. I mean, today I'm, I'm talking to you right now. After this, I'm going to talk to two Olympians and then two people from Hollywood. And I'm just a normal person. I'm just a, an elementary school teacher. But if you start using those networks and offer value, if you're putting something good into the world, you're going to make some, some important relationships that will help you down the road. And even if you don't, you'll have a richer Let's life. Have something. You're not just an elementary teacher. I think COVID-19 has proved parents globally <laughs> teachers <laughs> do a huge, you know, they, they do so much for the children. And, you know, it's, it's probably one of the most undervalued job. Uh, people aren't that grateful, thankful, but it's one of the best and most rewarding jobs in the world, to be honest. So you're not right. just a teacher. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, and, and certainly we have seen as parents have had their kids at home with them learning from home. I think a lot more people respect teachers and what, what we're doing now. So I, I appreciate that. Well, um, if people want to learn more about you and, and what you're up to, where's the best place for them to find you online? Could be on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, my handle is at advancing you. Uh, on LinkedIn, I am there's Hirali Coach, but on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, it's at advancing you. And my website is www.advancingyourpotential.com. Awesome. We'll link all those in the description on this video. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Thank you so much for having me.